I'm Kevin Mims with the Invading Sea, Florida-wide media collaborative that reports on climate change in the state. As part of that effort, we've started the Business of Climate Change, a weekly interview with businessmen and women whose companies are either affected by the warming climate or address climate challenges. Today's conversation is with Jared Myers, chairman of Legacy Vacation Resorts. Jared, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you for having me, Kevin. So, Jared, tell me a little bit about your company and its priorities in regard to sustainability and climate change. So uh, I know we're focused on legacy vacation resorts, but I wanted to point out, I, I actually have a few companies and we all treat uh, the climate crisis pretty uh, seriously. And those include a real estate development company called Salt Palm Development in St. Pete, Florida, Florida for Good, which is kind of a, a connector of responsible businesses and business networks, um, Climate First Bank, who I believe you would uh, spoken to as a mission of combating the climate crisis and then Legacy Vacation Resorts, uh, which is a hospitality resort company. Um, and I can focus on that, I think, and kind of with my response. But um, so for Legacy Vacation Resorts, you know, it's in the travel industry. And the travel industry is um, certainly a, a large contributor to um, the climate crisis that we face. Uh, a big significant portion of that comes from air travel, but really it's a whole you know, travel uh, experience. And uh, we look at ourselves as having a responsibility to reduce the harm that comes from our activities and to go even a step further and find ways to replenish our ecosystems and engage in more regenerative you know, behaviors. So the way that we go about that as an organization is we look at the total traveler's journey. So when someone says, is thinking that they wanna go on vacation, to the point that they actually go on vacation, enjoy it, return. You look at the whole journey and we try to think of each step of the way, how can we be more responsible, more sustainable, more regenerative? And usually that experience begins with our website. You know, so someone's hopping on there and trying to say, you know, why should I go to this company versus another one? And if you look on our website, you'll see we have a lot of language talking about sustainability and regenerative travel. And we look at that as the first touch point, to start educating our guests one, why we're unique and different, but two, why this is important. So if they go and they travel with someone else, that's fine. But hopefully now they're thinking a little bit differently about what the travel means to them and what the consequences are of them you know, taking that travel experience. Uh, because we don't, we're not in the airline business, we can't really control the you know, carbon footprint that comes from that length of travel. But what we can do is we can encourage more responsible forms of travel. So we do have free EV charging at all of our resorts and we promote that as a way to come to us and have a lower carbon footprint. Uh, when they arrive at check-in, for example, we give them a reusable water bottle. Um, that's part of our no, or no plastic uh, commitment, the, you know, no single use plastics, but it goes even a step further because um, you know, we want our guests to start understanding that you can reuse items and that we shouldn't just have kind of a linear equation of use something and trash it, but that there's uh, a continued use. So we get that at check-in. We also um, supply our guests with, their room keys are made of uh, paper or bamboo. And um, something we introduced over the last year was carbon labeling on our keys. So on the back side of those keys, you uh, can see really what the carbon footprint of your stay is. It's an estimate because obviously everyone's stay is a little bit different, but it gives you an idea that, hey, I stay here and it produces uh, emissions just by my enjoying my vacation. And then we go a step further because we do um, do carbon offsetting for all of our travelers. And we show them how many trees we are planting because they're traveling with us. So on the one hand, we can say, you don't have to worry about it, we got you covered. On the other, we're trying to provide the educational understanding that, hey, because you're staying here, we need to plant this number of trees. And so that be, kind of becomes a norm, like a nutrition label on, you know, on food that you might buy. Um, we are carbon neutral um, as an organization. So not just from our travelers, you know, footprints, but for our own with our operations, we feel that's very important. Um, However, in the grand scheme of things, it needs to move beyond you know, carbon offsets. And so we do focus on, you know, first the measurement, we have to know what, what are we emitting, what's our carbon footprint as an organization. And then from there, what are the ways that we can reduce emissions? And so you know, that uh, deals with renovations that we do, how we conduct our operations, and we're constantly seeking renewable energy alternatives at our uh, uh, resorts. Uh, the one we made the most progress in so far is in New Jersey, where we are, we're fully powered by renewable energy, and that's about 16% of our footprint. 
uh, at our other resorts, we're working in that direction. And so at some point we want to be fully renewably powered and we'll therefore only be able, probably at that point, rely on offsets for the scope three emissions, which are a little bit harder to address you know, directly as a company. Um, some additional items when guests stay with us, uh, we do donate 1% of our revenues to environmental based charities. And that's part of our commitment to 1% for the planet uh, that we've had in place for a few years. And um, all the commitments, everything I laid out, what I, I think is unique about them is it's not just something good that we're doing that can be discontinued tomorrow, but we have those requirements baked into the legal fabric of our company. And we do that by because we're a benefit corporation. We're actually a certified B Corp. So in our governance documents, we have to stand for a positive impact. And then we are, it's verified. And that's how the certification comes about. So we believe in a lot of transparency. Um, so hopefully that answered it. So Legacy Vacation, um, Legacy Vacation Resorts has locations in various parts of the state, including coastal areas. What changes have you seen in these areas in recent years with regard to climate change? So we've even seen them beyond the coastal areas, uh, but you know, in, in the coastal areas themselves, I mean, we have been you know, battered by storms that have been constantly increasing in frequency and in strength you know, over the years. Um, you know, we have our resort in New Jersey that, uh, you know, was hit by Hurricane Sandy, which was a little while back, but, um, it completely flooded the resort. So we actually have a water line in our restaurant that we have a sign on the wall to show how high it was. So basically, you know, guests that are dining there would be dining under the water you know, if, if it hadn't, you know, kind of, uh, if the water was still in place, but, um, we see, we see it at all of our properties and it, you know, it is scary, uh, because, um, it's hard to imagine if these resorts will be able to function on an ongoing basis if we don't address these these issues. And you know, we've seen it not just from you know, and sea level rise and from storms. And I know this isn't specific just to climate, but just to the environment. You know, we you know we we were dealing with red tide for quite a while over on the west coast of Florida. That is um, bad for so many reasons. But if you just want to talk about tourism alone in the business, um, you did. <laughs> Telling you firsthand, being on the beach during red tide, you don't want to be on the beach. It, you know the smell, the way that your um, physical reaction uh, to that occurring. Uh, it's just nowhere that you want to be. So there's a lot of you know, scary changes that are happening right now in our environment with our climate that affect the sea, uh, you know, base the coastal based properties. But even ones, you know, we have projects in uh, Colorado, for example, and those were you know hit pretty hard by wildfires this last year. And so as I was out there uh, during one of our trips, uh, you know, it's not easy to breathe. You know, beyond the devastation that comes with the wildfire, homes, animals, you know, ecosystems, um, it, it's just not an enjoyable environment at that point. And those are becoming, as we saw, more frequent, more severe. So Jared, what should businesses in the travel and hospitality industries be doing to reduce their footprints and become more climate friendly? I think the first thing that I would like to see of our industry is uh, for companies to recognize that we're part of you know, kind of one ecosystem. The environment is not separate of us. And I think thinking of the environment and us as separate is kind of led to where we are today. Um, in order to have a healthy environment, we have to have a healthy relationship with that environment. We have to live in harmony with it. Uh, if we don't do that, our businesses aren't gonna survive. They're certainly not gonna thrive. And so we just we need to change a little bit about the way that we think of our relationship with nature and the environment and just the world at large. As we do that, I think one of the first steps is, or one of first or second step is, it helps to be part of um, communities that are already sustainable and think in a certain direction because you can learn a lot. You don't have to start from scratch and figure it all out yourself. So a, a good community in. Uh, the tourism space specifically for like carbon footprints is tourism declares. And so that helps companies declare a climate emergency. It helps them learn a blueprint for how to measure emissions and what they can do about it. So I think those communities help, uh, but ultimately that leads you to the step of measurement. And so uh, the same way that no business exists without a, uh, a profit and loss statement they get at the end of every month, so they know what's going on, they need to know what their carbon footprint is at the end of every month too. And that's the only way they can manage it into the right direction. So I, I believe that our 
businesses in our industry need to measure that. They can use third parties to help them do that. They don't have to figure it out from scratch or they can learn from a community like Tourism Declares or Be Tourism. And then they can start you know, moving that into the right direction. Um, additionally, I'd say, you know, just learn from other companies that are doing it out there. So all the initiatives I touched on earlier that Legacy is doing are published on our website. We're very transparent about it. We want people to follow it. We publish an annual benefit report and I encourage it, you know, any companies to reach out to us if they have any questions. Jared, how can people travel and vacation more sustainably? I think first, um, people need to pay attention to who and how you're spending your money. You know, who, who you're spending your money with, how are you spending it? Because we don't always recognize that we sometimes give money to great companies that do good things with those dollars. And then sometimes we give money to companies that actually really go against our values. They spend them in directions that we're quite upset with once we learn that. Um, What's unique, I think, about B Corps, because of the transparency, because of the credibility behind it, it provides for a very easy way for people to shop with their values. So they have a campaign they call Vote Every Day. So when you, you know, basically when you say the B Corp, a B Corp, you are voting in the direction of your values in doing so. So I think do a little bit of research to understand who it is that you're traveling with. And the comfort level you get with staying with a company that is credible and transparent about it is it becomes more of a carefree vacation. You're not having to do all the work because these are companies that exist for a positive impact to begin with. So, um, so I would say that's definitely one of the first, you know, first places to start with for some like, you know, really quick things, rule of thumb, um, you know, drive instead of fly if you can take, you know, fewer vacations, but make them longer. Uh, start using reusable items instead of single use you know, items that you trash, uh, reduce your food waste, eat less meat. I think there's a, there's a whole handful of other ones I could probably throw out there, but these are just kind of very specific ones that, that would apply regardless of who your uh, travel pro provider is. Got it. So Jared, what can the Florida legislature do to help the travel industry become more sustainable and climate friendly? Um, I would like to see the legislature be a true ally. Uh, to this and understand that um, there is no business, there is no quality of life, there is no good future for the residents of Florida if we are not proactive and significantly proactive. We've waited much too long. Uh, so like for some very specific things that the legislature can do, now this may be more federal oriented, but the Florida legislature can support that through their efforts. We need a price on carbon. Um, so there's a lot of conversations out there about carbon fees, carbon taxes, carbon dividends. Really what it boils down to is when carbon is emitted, there's a, uh, a consequence to that. And there really should be a cost associated with that. And if a cost was built in, then when we're buying products, that would be incorporated within those products. The dividend component is because then people say, well, wait a second, everything's going to get more expensive. The dividend ensures that dollars go back to citizens so that it ultimately isn't more expensive when you, when you factor that in. So I think a price on carbon is one of the highest, the most important thing that our legislature can focus on. And then secondarily, I think they can incentivize better behavior. You know, if, if our legislature really believes that the, that the climate crisis is important, and I hope they, they do, and I believe you know, at their core they do, um, they can incentivize all sorts of behavior that would encourage us to move in the right direction. They should get businesses wanting to accomplish um, you know, decarbonization. They should have individuals wanting to achieve their same goals. So I'd say those are probably the two you know, biggest areas that they can focus on. And uh, I know there's ongoing efforts like the Citizens Climate Lobby is very much behind the, um, I think it's the Energy Innovation Act that relates with a carbon kind of fee and dividend. Uh, and then there's a lot of different incentives I've seen around the country that could be incorporated here in Florida. Jared, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.